Allied is one of a very few number of companies making its carbon fiber bikes in the United States. In this video, we get a tour of exactly how it does it from Sam Pickman, Director of Product and Engineering. Sam and I worked together at Specialized back in the day where he designed one of the tarmac iterations. Inside Allied, they use a variety of processes to build these bikes. There's a lot of computer automated laser cutting, there's a lot of detailed handiwork, heavy metal is machined, and couscous is employed. Really, they use couscous to build their carbon bikes. If you haven't already, please take a second to subscribe to the channel and then sit back and enjoy this tour of Allied. Hey, we are here at Allied Cycle Works. I'm Dan Sam Pickman, Director of Product here at Allied, and uh, we're going to show you where we make bikes. Let's do it. Here is the cutting and kitting room. Um, here we're gonna roll out material, they're flat sheets of material, and it's going to be cut into uh, flat sheets, and those sheets are then going to be pre-stacked um, according to you know, whatever parts are gonna be made that day. So at Allied, we use predominantly uh, unidirectional prepreg. So uni, if you look at this thing right here, these strands are all running in one direction and the resin is already pre-impregnated into the material so when it comes off all it needs to do is then be formed into the final part shape and then it's actually ready to be cured. The next step is actually going to be kitting where they're taking all those individual pieces of carbon they're arranging them and in some cases pre-stacking them um, kind of like uh, puzzle pieces being put in order before they get brought over here to the layup room. So here we are in layup as you can see behind me we have a uh, bunch of different people from the layup team who are taking those uh, kits that you saw being processed in, in the other room and they're being formed into what are called preforms. So the idea here is to take every single ply from that kit to form it into something that is very close to the final shape of the cured part. Um, and we're using lots of different tools behind us. We have preform tools, we've got these custom bladders that we use inside the parts to get the interior shapes. Um, and then you'll see over here, we are loading those parts into aluminum cure tools to be able to get our final parts. In some of our parts, we're using these latex bladders. And the reason we use these is for more complicated geometries. So you can see for this, for, on this one, for instance, we've got shock mount, um, we're trying to um, mold, you know, different uh, complex areas around the seat tube here. And what we do is we get these custom dipped bladders um, and we fill them with uh, pearl couscous, of all things. We draw a vacuum on it and when you do that, they become firm, right? And then you can lay up right on top of these bladders. And uh, once you have all the plies on, you dump out the the couscous, and then um, these will act as the bladders inside the part. So anything that is like round and firm is great. So you can use any number of things. We've used glass beads, um, we used uh, beans, um, but couscous works great. And you can feel it too, how rigid it becomes. So these lines are all vacuum lines. So once you get it filled up, there's a little forming tool we use to get the bladders to the right shape and then fill it up with this draw vacuum on it. Because the key is you really want to, um, it's, it helps so much to have something firm to lay up onto. And if it's as close to the final interior shape as possible, your bets of having a really good high quality part in the end are very high. So once the parts are laid up, they get put into these aluminum cure tools, which then get rolled out in these conveyors and then put into these heat presses here. So the presses, they push down on the part with 20 tons and then they're heated to 130 degrees Celsius. And then you see the air lines running from the presses into the tools. Those air lines are putting pressure into those bladders, pushing uh, outward so those carbon parts kind of fill the tools. So the pressure from inside as well as the heat are what cures into what you get here is your final part. So what we have here is a, a, an echo fork. 
And you'll see this tool is like a Russian nesting doll. It's just aluminum tools inside of aluminum tools. And uh, the goal of that, the point of that, is you want to mold as close to your final part as possible. You don't want to do a bunch of processing down the line. So right now we're making um, split spacers for the headset. So we make a majority of our small parts. So we don't have a turning center, so we don't make anything that's in a long tube. But any milled part, uh, we're making in-house. So we have links here that are in process. And then we also have, these are stem bodies for the Echo stem. Um, and these are still to be finished off on the last operation. We make about 25 of our individual small parts here, as well as all the tooling uh, to support what's going on out there. All right, so over here, Randy is setting up a uh, echo bottom bracket part on this routing table right here. So all of you, all of our parts are made in kind of separate pieces. We don't make a whole bike in one shot. So those pieces have to be connected together. And one of the things that gives you a high quality bike is the fit of those pieces coming together. So on the Echo, we have one side that obviously fits into the other side. The one side is molded, the other side is machined on this routing table here to ensure perfect fit. Precision at every level actually helps in reducing your cost of goods sold. So when we have really great parts at a layup, and we do a really good job of uh, you know, precision machining these joints, everything comes together smoothly. It actually reduces our cost of goods sold because one, we have lower rework. Two, we have less time kind of hand finishing those parts to get them to look right. And uh, three, we just don't have as, as many issues with uh, alignment or uh, any other sort of customer kind of dissatisfaction. You know, competing with uh, Asian cost of goods is always gonna be one of the main challenges for us. We inspect 100% QC. It's no like you're checking every fifth one or something. We're checking every single part. Because with carbon, you, can't, you just can't do that. They're all their own deal. And you know the consequences for letting a bad part go through are just too great. And once frames are bonded, they then kind of become a bicycle, right? You can ride it. It's a, a functional thing. But it's still not ready for the consumer because the surface is not ready for paint, right? So the next step we go into is into finishing. And in finishing, you can see behind me here, the first step is sanding. You have to prepare the surface for paint. And we use such high quality, high gloss paints that the surface needs to be perfect. Perfectly flat, perfectly smooth. The way we get there is by adding layers, different primer layers, and then sanding them down until for one, you've got all the right layers so your paint sticks properly and has good um, uh, longevity, uh, but you also want to make sure, obviously, that, that that surface is extremely smooth so it looks perfect. And now here we are in paint. So paint is a really big part of the process for us. Being a Made Here brand, you know, one of the main advantages for buying one of our bikes versus a bike off the shelf is you get to pick your color, you get to pick your uh, decal color, and you get to pick your final finish. So that's obviously a really big deal. Um, we invested a ton in our paint and finishing process over the last few years to get to a point where we feel like we have the best finishes in the business. Here, after the bikes are you know, perfectly smooth, ready for paint, they put down the decal color first, then we lay down a yellow masking and then they're going to put on this base color and they peel the masking off to reveal the decal color and then the bikes will be uh, clear coated after that. And finally we're here in assembly and assembly is just what you think. So we uh, pick the parts depending on the customer's order and uh, they get assembled here 100% um, if it's a direct -to consumer bike and then for our dealers um, they get to assemble the bikes themselves. For those direct-to-consumer ones, it gets 100% built, QC'd, um, the guys will even pedal it around to make sure everything is right, and then it gets boxed with uh, just the front wheel removed and uh, the seat post removed. 
Thanks for that tour, Sam. And thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Allied, I'll put links to the company site in the description, as well as reviews on some of their bikes from myself and some of my colleagues, such as James Wong. Thanks for watching the video. And if you haven't already, go check out the video on how and why Bentonville is booming for bikes.